separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Good morning, please do be seated. And a warm welcome to Chester Cathedral to a service where we celebrate the life of Edna Deleuze. We're here to give thanks for her life and all those who have known her and loved her and all that she's done for you in her life. A prayer. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope Strengthen this faith and hope in all our days that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hope that you've been able to find a order of service, we're going to stand to sing Amazing Grace.
Please be seated. We're going to hear Psalm 23 read. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to read the first half on behalf of Katrina. When I look back on my life, happy memories pour in with the time I had with Nan. Taking us for ice cream, playing badminton in her garden, climbing the trees on our daily walk to the co-op with Gemma. And you would always try to guess where we were, even though you knew. Baking apple pies on the weekend and selling them to the village, you always telling me, gorgeous Katrina, the best pie yet telling us a, a story in Great Nana's bed before we went to sleep, helping us with our spelling when we laughed so hard when Tanya spelled Eliphaz instead of elephant, taking us to the little chef for eggs and chips after school and always getting us Dunkin' Donuts at the end, always bringing treats after school and the goody good drawer always being full, dinners at the ready, mint sauce on the table, and you would say to me, that's a Navy's dinner, Katrina. All the fun we had at Jungle Bungles and dressing up as witches at Halloween with our fangs and bin bags and you always taking us trick-or-treating. Waiting for Hannah at the bus stop and loving your grandchildren being together. Christmas was always your favourite time, but most of all you told me that you loved me, Tanya and Hannah and the grandchildren being there on Christmas Day. You loved all your children being together, but most of all together with you. As the years went on and I grew up, you became my friend, not just my nana. We would talk for hours and we would both say we can only tell each other this, and we would both smile. You were there through the best times, but also through the worst. You wiped the tears and would always say, everything will be okay with me and Oscar, and held my hand tight, and you were always right. We lived with you and I moved. As we sat in the lounge in our fluffy socks with our dolce gustos, we both cried when it was time for me to go. But not for long, I would say now. I'll be back, and I always was. The Grosvenor was our special place, and we used to look forward to it. I would pick you up, and we would talk all the way there about breakfast. Each year, you would ring us all singing, happy birthday. We all waited for that. It wasn't our birthday until that call was made. All our coffee outings, lunch dates, afternoon tea at the Ritz, the kind words you would say to us all, would always make us feel better. Your favourite quote, my treat, Katrina, in the front of the purse. And I would say, no, Nan, if I can't treat my Nan, there's something wrong. And you would smile and say, I used to say the same to my mum. Asking Janet to go to the bank to sneak £20 when we were overdrawn, and you, you laughing. Kelso was our place. I knew that once I was there, it would feel like home. Getting me the biggest Easter egg every year and me telling Hannah and Tanya that I was a favourite and you would chuckle. But now you have gone on to another journey, a journey that Grandad has waited such a long time for. As I drive past our happy place, soon they will be replaced with smiles instead of tears, and I will always remember you saying it will be okay in the end. Today is not goodbye, but a celebration of the lives you have touched, and for that we are the luckiest grandchildren. Like I always said to you, I love you, Nan. Always and forever, Katrina. I'm going to read the next part written on behalf of Tanya. Now I'm going to share some stories from Nan over the years. Nan was an amazing storyteller that could make you a magical story on the spot. 
but her favourite stories were the real life ones of her family. Nan would share stories of her children, Jimmy, Janet, Terry and Debbie, and their adventures in Australia, but the ones she talked to me about the most were the ones of her grandchildren, who she loved so dearly. Nan would talk with excitement about her love of rugby, which she shared with Chris, or as she called him, CJ. I always knew when rugby season was on, because if you called Nan and couldn't get through, she was definitely on to Chris. It meant the world to Nan that she could talk all things rugby with Chris, as the rest of us had no clue. Nan was equally thrilled to be a part of Chris's family and meeting everyone with her usual welcoming arms. Her stories of Renee always stemmed around the mug she made Nan and Grandad. This giant mug sat on a very small shelf, but to Nan, she would rather take stuff off the shelf than put it in a cupboard. It sat with pride as a reminder of her times with Renee on her Australia trips, and it still sits there today. Lily and Amy came along later in life, but were loved just the same. Nan was forever proud of their amazing sport achievements and couldn't wait to share all their good news. Vicky was one of Nan's quietest grandchildren, but Nan would always manage to make her smile. Nan would tell the stories of giving Vicky an, an Argos catalogue to circle all her furniture for the house a few streets down from Nan, which that Vicky planned to live in. The stories of Hannah, Aaron and Kelvy would always be sharing all the main celebrations with Cat Eye in Nan's house. Apple bobbing at Easter, fireworks at bonfire, Halloween trick-or-treating, and Nan's absolute favourite, us all sat together Christmas night, laughing together. I would always chuckle when Nan would say she needed a pedicure, so would ring Hannah to do it. Nan loved visits with Nicola and Michael. Every time they would come for a visit, Nan would take us to Morrison's to stock up on extra goodies for the goodie drawer and biscuits for the biscuit barrel. Nan would say that she wanted them to have loads of treats and wouldn't be content until the drawer was empty. Finally, Katrina and I. I tried to write down some key memories, but there were too many to choose from. This just tells me how lucky we were to have a Nan with such a main part in our lives. For all the tears that are now, I will forever remember Nan's face when I cried and she said, please don't cry, it hurts too much to see you sad. Stories of Nan will instead be filled of smiles and happiness. From all the endless goodies, to being the biggest support at our graduation, to the hundreds of days out, to showing us love beyond compare. My most cherished memory above all is Nan's love for Mia, Ollie and Oscar. I thought I knew love before, but this paled in comparison. Nan held them on the days they were born and they became her favourite story to talk to me about. The perfect love story. Good night. Nana, Nan, Mrs Lyon, Nana E, Nana Jim, the nannies, great nanny, mum. We love you always and forever. Thank you for joining us today in this magnificent cathedral to celebrate the life of my mum. My magnificent mum. I would like to thank you, Canon Jane, for your support. I would also like to thank my, my sisters, Debbie and Janet in particular, and their families for all the care and compassion that you've showed mum over the years. I can't express to you how much I appreciate it. A friend of mine in Australia called me a few days ago uh, to offer his condolences and we were chatting about mum and the types of person she was. I was explaining how kind she was and said, and said to him, Everything that is good about the Deleuzes comes from her. And his response in typical Aussie style was he replied, what a shame you only got 5%. Cards are stuff. Mum loved birthdays and Christmases and you've heard that before 
not just for the gathering of the family, but for the cash she received. Uh, she always received it with a delighted, ooh, smashing. And I'll put that straight into the front of my purse for coffee and cake at the Grosvenor. She would then stuff it in her special kangaroo purse. And of course, she would send it all back to us as Christmas presents and birthday. Mum went, mum went by many names. You heard them just a moment ago. Edna, Mum, Zia, Gil, which was pretty typical of, you know, Pete from Terry and myself. Nana, Nana E, Mrs Lyon were just a few amongst them. Mum was kind and warm and funny. She had a love of the family that was massive. She loved rugby. She loved Liverpool Football Club. And more than anything, dogs. Not always in that order though. She welcomed everyone with open arms and then proceeded to feed them whether they were hungry or not. She was like Mrs Doyle from Father Ted, never accepting no for an answer. Go on, go on, go on, she would say. Get it, get it into you. When mum was diagnosed in 2019, she accepted the news like she did everything else. With grace, good humour, but in the cruelest of blows, it was a disease that robbed her of her ability to be clearly heard. It frustrated, frustrated her no end. Still typical of mum, there were no complaints, just a dogged determination and com to communicate with whatever she wanted to say, whenever she wanted to say it. Like all families, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but one thing that we have in common is the love of our mum. One thing we all share is a deep loss. One thing we agree on is what a fantastic mum to me, Janet, Terry and Debbie, she was. She was so proud of her children and their children. Any achievement, big or small, was met with her trademark smashing. And then shared with everybody and anybody that wanted to know that tale. She was the best grandmother, great grandmother, sister, auntie, great auntie and friend. She spent her life providing a soft place for us all to land. In losing her, we've lost our greatest supporter and our loudest cheerleader. And now she's gone to join her brothers, Willie, Gordon, her sisters Ivy, Olive, and her beloved husband, Jim. It's, it is a comfort to know her brother, John, is here, her little sister, Marion, some of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and her extended family are with us live via a stream from the USA and Australia. She loved all of you, and she knew she was loved in return. A famous poet, Maya Angelou, once wrote, I've learnt that people will forget what you, what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. And that is exactly why we're never going to forget you, Mum. So this is not a sad goodbye. It is till next time, Mum. And until then, your memory will live in all of us. Love you, Mum, and may you always have money in the front of that purse. I would just like to, if you, if, you, um, if you don't mind, I would just like, if you can stand and just give a round of applause for Mum.
Thank you. Would you like to stay standing for the reading? So the reading is from John chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Please be seated. So a few words about Edna's life. Edna was born on May the 11th in 1934 in Warrington to parents Hannah and Frank. She was one of a family of eight who loved to go swimming before she went to school. Later, she became a lifeguard. She had happy memories of her childhood and always spoke fondly of those times. She met Jim when she was 17 at a dance and she married him at 19, the love of her life. Later, they both nicknamed themselves as Darby and Joan. So married at 19 years of age, they lived with Jim's parents for 18 months and Edna was very proud that they saved enough money to put a deposit on a house. They moved to Liverpool Road where Edna did hairdressing in her front room and customers used to wait in the hallway for their turn. She had four children, Jimmy, Janet, Terry and Debbie, and in 1966, due to her health is Janet's health issues, they emigrated to Sydney, Australia on the £10 POM ticket. Nana and Grandad Wright, Ivy, Olive and Marion followed to Australia to be together. Edna had opened a salon opposite her home in Australia by now, and Ivy and Ollie joined her, joined her there. Jim worked for Qantas, which gave them the opportunity to travel first class and to see the family back in England. Edna spoke lovingly and loved her 10 years in Australia. In 1976, due to family reasons, Edna returned to England with three of her children, Terry, Janet and Debbie, to live in Alvinley. Jim and Edna hosted many family gatherings, welcoming grandchildren, CJ and Renee, Vicky, Lily, Amy, Hannah, Michael, Nicola, Tanya and Katrina. And they shared their home with their much-loved staffy dogs, Jake and Ocka. Later, Jim and Edna moved to a bungalow in Kelso and acquired another dog. This was where grandchildren regularly visited, which they both loved. They both went on cruises, and Edna particularly loved going to church, and her strong faith gave her real cheerfulness. When, they used to, when Edna used to come to the cathedral at the 10.30 service, we welcomed four generations to the congregation, which we all loved. When Edna was ill in her later life, she used to watch the live stream services from this cathedral. Later, she went to Mount Pleasant, and the family really appreciated the care that they gave to her there. And they called her, very fittingly, the beautiful lady. Jesus said, there are many rooms in my father's house. Perhaps we can let our imagination go and think of the kind of room Edna might be in now, that beautiful lady. Maybe in the room, there's a window looking out to Australia. Maybe there are at least two dogs sitting at her feet, pottering in and out. Maybe it's a room full of family photographs of everyone she loved as she was alive. Maybe there's a place to make a cup of tea and to have some treats. Maybe there's a kangaroo purse at the ready. And maybe on the television, there's rugby forever. It has to be a room where there are people coming and going constantly. And Edna would be standing there with a smile, arms open, welcoming everyone, ready to offer them food and drink and a chat. 
Edna, the beautiful lady, is now at peace, having lived a good life, having loved so many people, and she leaves the people she loved in a far better place than they would have been otherwise. And today, we all thank God for having known and loved Edna in different ways. Amen. And we're going to now listen to Ave Maria by Franz Schubert. So let us pray. 
Grant us, loving God, the wisdom and the grace to use right the time that's left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins and the evil we have done and the good we have not done. Strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember, O Lord, this your servant Edna, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to stand for the commendation? Let us commend our sister Edna to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you gave us life. And in your love, you've given us a new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Edna to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever and ever. Amen. And our concluding hymn is Abide With Me.